Oh, this one's about patches. Patches of hula hand. Where does that name from? Patches of hula hand. That's from um, dodgeball. Dodge a red chicken, dodge a ball. <laughs> We're ready to believe you. We're back with another episode of Ready to Believe. I'm Jamie Pale Ryder. I'm Rob Williams. And today we are talking patches. Patches! Patches! Not patches of Hulan, Rob. Not patches of Hulan. And not 501st patches either, <laughs> although that's pretty sweet. <laughs> that's a good one. Just grabbing stuff off my desk. Uh, today we are talking. Uh, well, well there's, there's a couple of patches we need to go over. We need to go over the, the name, name patches and. The, the no ghost patches. This is, where I, this is my bat, true van. I get to flip, the, flip the names here. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, there's, there's honestly not much to talk about. Um, if you're if you're getting patches, I've got I got all mine from GB fans, uh, including like the the custom name patches. Uh, so they offer Ghostbusters one and Ghostbusters two style name patches. There is a difference, so make sure. If you're building a costume and you have a specific movie in mind and you, you're you concerned about that sort of thing, there is a difference for sure. Uh, the I don't have any Ghostbusters 2 name patches that I can show. Like this is obviously the Ghostbusters 1 style. The two uh, Ghostbusters 2 name patches, uh, the font is smaller and the font is actually different. Um, so yeah, once once you if you're looking for it, it, it uh, stands out when you're watching the movies. This looks like a home. I, I love the the font of this. I'm a big font fan, <laughs> and um, I, I love this font because it looks like it was just kind of hand sewn in a just a. We gotta get a name up there. We gotta put yeah. Bankman up there. Yeah. So <laughs> so and then other than the name patches, we also have the the no ghosts patches or the Moogly, whatever you want to call it. So actually, uh, GB fans again. It's it's such a great site. It's basically a one stop shop for the most part. Uh, they offer uh, also Ghostbuster two patches, but uh, they offer the the no ghosts patches in like the original style and more of an idealized style. So we'll do a quick close up here. It's going to be tough to get that on camera, but basically the main difference is um, this is the 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 original style is a lot thinner. Uh, especially in the white areas, the the shape of the the circle logo is a little bit off, uh, particularly right up here. Uh, where this one, it's still got a bit of that misshapen, but it's definitely like the the patch itself is is thicker. You can feel it right away. Uh, the embroidery is is much more uh, just modern. Um, where this one, it was clearly produced a little bit cheaper back in the day. Uh, so the the original style is what I have on my suit right now. Mm. Uh, so this was hand sewn. Uh, this was a joint effort between myself and Christine. Um, she kind of showed me the basics. Oh, this is the one you enjoyed sewing. I hate hand sewing. <laughs> um, yeah. The text you sent me of pure Holy anger and crap. rage. <laughs> yeah, so uh, yeah, I, I definitely had a bit of a rage um, hand sewing this, this patch on, mostly because like <laughs> for someone who's not super uh comfortable with hand sewing i will basically like all the patches that i sew for the the star wars stuff um those are all done with machine mm -hmm. uh i will i will wrestle with a machine um to sew things on before i will ever even entertain the idea of hand sewing so why did you hand sew this uh mostly because it, well a couple of reasons it was hand sewn in the movies okay uh and it's also this would be really hard to stitch with a machine. Okay. Uh, mostly because of the details around the fingers and his head, but also if, if there's no border mm. that you could really stitch into. Like if you look at the name badge, yeah, yeah. this is easy to, to machine sew because you just stitch in the border. The border's nice and thick. Right. Where like this basically doesn't have a border. That's true. Even on the, the idealized one, there's no real border to speak of. And even around like the white details, there's a very thin, thin black border. Where normally like on, on other patches, the name badges are a good example of that. They have a thicker kind of embroidered border on it uh, that's much, much easier to hit with a machine. Uh, so this basically required a lot more 
precise stitching. It looks really good. I mean, it looks fantastic. I mean, I will give full credit to Christine on that one. She kind of showed me the ropes on one, how to hand stitch it in a way where the stitches are kind of hidden, especially in the red. Uh, Because the the stitches are basically going from inside to outside. Um, So if you were to stitch kind of in a line around the stitches would be pulling those threads okay. and it would make it very visible from mm-hmm. afar. So basically she showed me a way to stitch it in which the stitches are, if I did it correctly, uh, mostly hidden by the, the red embroidery. I don't see it at all. Uh, yeah. That's that's awesome. Yep. So I use red around there and then around the white bits that kind of protrude from outside the logo, I used white stitching and stitched just inside that black border again so as to be as hidden as much as possible so i am going to show you how i put this patch on through the lovely red embroidery but invisibly so you can't see where my stitches are so this is still loose hopefully you can see this nicely but i've got one string that i folded in half so there's a loop on one end and there's the two ends here. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to thread both ends through this needle and I think with the power of editing, Rob is gonna make it look like I'm really cool and that I've threaded this instantly with no problems whatsoever. Aha, power of editing. Oh, look at that, totally first try. Wow, (laughs) it's amazing, (laughs) oh my goodness. Okay, so. I'm gonna just put my hand at the back here so I don't stab through multiple layers. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of come up here with the needle and hopefully we can get this on camera how those two threads are separated with the needle. So pull the needle up, don't go all the way. That loop on the back is important and I will tell you why later. Um, In fact, I'm grabbing the loop so it doesn't come through. So, where those two threads are separated, come down just a few millimeters and put the needle back in. Where the loop is important, turn this around, is so that we don't have a knot on the back. So what you're doing instead is running the needle through the loop and now it's secure. So, We can do that again by putting it just a few millimeters down. Let's see, like there. So that thread is separated. Line up. And come back down. You can see it's, uh, this one might need a little fluffing with your finger, but seams are mostly gone. Just can you continue around? Alrighty, so now I'm going to show you how I uh, invisibly end my piece, and again without knots, just so you're not um, rubbing up against those when you're in the suit. So what I'll do is I'll pick three generally random spots like so. Um, And again, you wanna stitch down between those threads. Sometimes it's difficult, so I just pull the thread down and make them separate. So you do that, um, and I'll do that about three times in the same uh, general location, kind of at random points. Um, And when it's, that kind of secures it like a knot. I'm gonna go on the back here. Just generally run that thread through a few stitches. 
and then snip off the end and call it a day. It looks so, fantastic. Yeah. It it was It doesn't come up at all. It's nice flush. Yeah. Or, so I mean I, I appreciate that. It was it, mostly the reason why I was raging is I don't know if, if you've ever if you've been hand yes. sewing. Yes, uh, yes, hand sewing yeah, socks. When you're, I hate it. Especially, like, mostly, it takes me a while to get the thread ready to go at all on the on the needle, and then my first pull on my first stitch, it knotted. <laughs> so, like, if you're, I, it was probably because I was trying to stitch too fast, uh, but I was pulling it through really quick, and on the other side where the thread is pulling through, it just like knotted itself and stuck. And it's like, a game of patience. There's no way to get that out. I'm sure you could if if you're more patient than I am with hand sewing, but I was like. If that happens, I just cut it and start over. See, so yeah, with hand stitching, I'm, I wouldn't call myself a patient man when it comes to hand <laughs> stitching. Uh, yeah, I, I feel much more comfortable using a sewing machine. Uh, like, that's what I did with putting the Velcro on these patches mm -hmm. on the back. Now, in the movies, the, the name patches are, are sewn directly to the suit. Yeah. I wanted the option of switching this out between Pale Rider or, or my real last name. Uh, so I, I moved the Velcro on this suit, so that's seam ripping and then, yes. and then machine sewing. You wanted to get it closer to the edge there Yeah, too, right? so to put the Velcro in the right spot, uh, and then I sewed Velcro to this, to the, yes. the actual name badges. Yeah. Um, they have like iron on adhesive. I don't really trust that stuff. I've seen it pull away before, so I'd rather just sew it on. For my patches on my BDU, I use the sticky tape one. Yeah, mm. the, where it's strong, and I, I just don't take it off a lot. So yeah, I, I know if I careful, it will it come off, off yeah. if I tug it wrong. But yeah, um, but this one here, how often do you want to replace this? Not often. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, just coming I, off a little bit here. Like, <laughs> do you yeah. take that or? Yeah, I have double-sided tape on here. I need to find a better solution, but yeah, full disclosure, my my real middle name, uh, uh, my real middle name, or my real middle name, my last name is shorter. It's about this big. Like so. Um, so that's how big the Velcro is on the suit. Mm -hmm. um, I, and I didn't want to, yeah, want like for this one, Velcro. because it's so long, yeah, I didn't want the extra Velcro kind of poking out. Um, so yeah, I need to find a better, I have double-sided tape on here right now I'm testing out. It's clearly not working because it keeps coming up. But yeah, that's, that's not, the... Less less than the <laughs> helicopter. Are we doing the turkey drop? Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't, in the movies I feel like maybe Spangler or Zetamore had the longer names. Yeah. Um, but... It like they're the name tags are big, so like they go out pretty far. You got, you got this one here. It's like very different yeah. size. Yeah. So the we can size that one. Why did you buy this the, one? So this one it's I also just thinner. It's yeah. Like, like the light goes right through. Mm -hmm. So uh, when I was buying some stuff on Amazon, I saw the Spangler name tape. Egon's my favorite, uh, so I just bought this for fun. Not really. I don't think they posted the dimensions, but clearly it's it's a lot smaller. So like this isn't something that I could use on a suit because of the size. But yeah, if if you're ordering from GB fans, um, they they'll they'll make them for you. They'll make custom ones if you want one from the movie, like if you want Bikepin, Spangler, or whatever. And I will also link the font down below. I know it's, it sounds silly, but free font for, nerds. Yeah, you free font nerds. I <laughs> like I love fonts. Um, and um, I found some like online that I used. I tried to use for his stuff. So um, yeah, so I'll give you the font down below. Cool. But yeah, that's about that's it, it for, yeah. for patches. It um, is important, and they're cool too. Yeah, so. they are cool. It was, that was fun ordering those. And again, GB fans, such a, an awesome one-stop shop. Yeah, that's, that's, it. that's about yeah, it. So we can wrap it up here. So I'm Jamie Pale Rider. I'm Rob Williams. And we're, we're ready, ready to believe you. Believe you.